Hello, well we've had a bit of a cold week this week but it is starting to warm up a little bit so uh, you can feel that um, spring's on its way but uh, even though we've had cold weather there's, there's, um, there has been some things going on so welcome to another episode of Jim's Lotman Garden. <laughs> Well you can tell the season started to start because I'm starting to see things collecting in the greenhouse ready to go but uh, this section is all about parsnips. Now parsnips are one of my favourite vegetables. I've, um, I've grown parsnips for quite a few years. I've had some years where I've had absolutely no success at all. I've put in, um, I've put in seeds and I've just had literally none of them have germinated at all and uh, I'll put it mainly down to the weather to be honest with you but there's quite a lot that you can do to ensure your crop of um, parsnips um, and obviously parsnips are a really versatile um, um, vegetable you can make everything from obviously stews, roast parsnips are absolutely fantastic that's why, that's the best way I like them um, and you can also make a parsnip cake and if you've not tried this just follow the recipe for a carrot cake um, and Parsnip cakes are, I think, better than carrot cake, to be honest with you, but uh, I shall be, uh, or my son will be making one this weekend for me. So um, do try parsnip cake. Just just Google um, carrot cake recipe, and then rather than carrot, put parsnip in it. It is really nice. So, how to grow parsnips. Now, parsnips, as soon as you've got them going, are, um, you know, a pretty hardy vegetable, really. Um, the, the problem is with parsnip is it's really difficult to get them to germinate and there's a number of things you can do to improve this. Now when I um, put a video out last year when I was talking about the parsnips, um, I'll just quickly go over what I said there. Uh, what I always do when I'm putting parsnips in is I always use um, three varieties. Now what I've found is um, some years some varieties just don't grow. Um, so what I tend to do is put um, I'll make the, make the drills and I'll put in uh, one set of seed um, along the, um, the drill and then what I'll do is then I'll, I'll then get another packet of seed and put them up the drill and then I'll get a third packet of seed and put them up the drill as well and um, it's all belt and braces but some of them will come um, but um, germination is, is, is always a problem with um, parsnips as I say as soon as you've got them going they're away well, so what I do is put the drill pour all the seeds in and then put the drill, you know, sort of pour all the dirt back over, about an inch or so of dirt over the seeds. I water them once, not much, I just put um, up, a, up two rows of parsnips, I put maybe one, just over one can of um, water, so, you know, something like, something like that, obviously with the rows on, um, I'll put perhaps one, of, one, one and a half of those in. If the ground's reasonably damp, you don't really need to water them in. But um, I always tend just to give them a bit um, to start with. And then as soon as I've done that, what I'll do is get some bubble wrap, which is the, um, the, you know, the polythene that you get stuff wrapped in. And what I'll do is I'll put that over the, over the, um, um, the, uh, the rows of parsnip, weigh it down with some bricks, and then I'll leave that there for maybe two or three weeks. And that's going to do two things. One, it will um, obviously stop the wind from drying out the, um, the soil, so you'll keep the moist... Um, in uh, the moistness in in the soil, so that the um, uh, so the germination will occur. But secondly, it, it keeps the ground um, warmer than it would be normally. Obviously, you know you get rid of the wind chill factor, um, but you also um, you know it, it acts like a cloche sort of thing. You know, so it, it, it keeps the warmth in there. And obviously, parsnips one of the first vegetables you put in. Uh, with a parsnip, you need a really long growing season. You need to put them in early um, in the year. And, and dependent on the variety, it can be anything from sort of April, uh, March, April, May sort of time. Um, I tend to put mine in 
um, sort of April time. That's 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 the time I normally put mine in. And then obviously they will grow all the way through the year, and then you're harvesting them. Um, well, I always say harvest them after you've had a frost, because I find if you've had a frost, the um, the um, the starch in the in the uh, the parsnips then turn to sugar, so it's you know it's a sweeter sweeter taste. So that's um, that you know that's the best way. You can dig them up before, and of course you can dig them up all the way through the year. Um, and then you've got kind of a window between sort of November, December when you have the frost, all the way through Christmas, New Year, and then now I've got probably about half of them left, so I'll probably be eating parsnips up until probably. Um, um, to the end of February, possibly into March, uh, but obviously as soon as they start um, shooting again in the in the new year, when the warm weather comes, that's really when you need to get them out and get them um, eaten. They don't keep in the house very well, um, so what you need to do is leave them in the ground until you need them, dig them up and then um, do that. Having said all of that, even though this is the you know the way I germinate them, I have still had problems where for some reason what you can get is areas of the um, the rows where you've got no parsnips and what you're supposed to do is thin them out so you've got um, a parsnip every kind of nine inches to ten inches um, in the row that's ideally what you want to do so then they'll grow on and then you know you know form the full um, parsnip. Uh, there are other various methods where you can dig the ground um, get any stones out that you possibly find when you're digging just just chuck them on the path or you know on the on the, on the drive or whatever and then um, some people also um, either put a stick like a dibber in the ground and then make a hole and then put compost in. I don't do that um, purely for the cost of the, uh, the compost to be honest with you. Because if you think if you've got two or three rows of parsnips you're going to end up with I don't know 40, 50 holes to put the parsnip in um, and you know you're filling a hole kind of like that and that deep with, with compost you're going to be getting through three or four um, bags of compost which is reasonably expensive to do. What you can do is just riddle the soil. So get a riddle which is obviously just a round or, or, or a square box with some grill at the bottom. All it does just filters out the, the stones and that which is the bit that you're trying to um, get rid of and then sort of just, just get them out of the way. The things with parsnip is um, a parsnip plant um, like any plant has got a tapping root and the tapping root will go straight down and then you have other little roots coming off. The little roots coming off are the bits that are looking for the nutrition. The tapping root that goes straight down is the root that's looking for the water. So this this tapping root is obviously the bit that you eat. That's the bit that you want to um, um, to grow nice and strong and long. Now, if that tapping root, which is which are quite weak, hit a stone or um, or anything like that, what it'll do is either stop altogether, and that's when you end up with short, stubby, fat parsnips um, or it'll try to go round the stone if it, if it hits the side of it and you end up with sort of bent parsnips or split parsnips. So really it is within your interest to get all the stones out. Now the area of my allotment that I grow parsnips in I know there's not a lot of stone there anyway. Um, I do get the occasional one which is kind of fat and stubby which I've um, said in uh, it was either one of the early January ones or, or possibly December where I, where I dug some out and I'd shown you the uh, the parsnips and they were nice and long. The next one I dug out and I thought, thank goodness I didn't video this. I dug it out and it was it was sort of that big at the top, but it only went down that far. It was it was wider than it was deep. Um, and obviously there was a stone that it had hit. Um, you know there aren't many stones, but obviously it had found one. Um, it it had hit the stone and it had it had developed the top, but it hadn't developed the root, which is obviously the bit that you want. So. When you when you sow any parsnips, what you want to do is um, get as many stones out as you can. Make sure the soil is loose. Dig the soil and then give it a day just to settle, and then plant your parsnips in. Uh, that's the best way to do it. So the ground's nice and loose. The tapping root can go down. Um, never try to plant parsnips in soil which is heavy, like clay um, or, or anything like that. Always make sure you've got a reasonable amount of organic material there, and the soil's nice and loose, and it's been reasonably um, um, reasonably recently dug. Um, so you know, so the soil's loose and the and the, uh, the root will go down, um, and then plant your seeds as I've explained, and then all being well, you should have a good crop. Um, the one other tip that I will say, which is which is something that I've been doing over the past kind of seven or eight years, is don't touch the seed with your hand, or if you do need to touch the seed with your hand, if you're sort of tapping the seed out of the packet into the ground, and um, 
and you get um, like a clump of seeds dropping out and you go like five or six seeds in one place and you want to spread them out. Get some dirt and rub it into your hands. Get your hands dirty. Uh, because on your hands there is bacteria and that can affect the seed. Um, now I had one year where I had, out of two rows, I had about four parsnips come up. And I was talking to one of my neighbours and he said, have you touched the seeds with your hands? And I said, yes, I have. I've, I've sort of got them out and put them out. And he said, that's your problem. Don't touch the seed with your hands. So this isn't, this doesn't apply to everybody. Obviously, I must have bacteria on my hands that's not good for parsnips. But uh, if you do have problems, or to be on the safe side, just get the, get the seed packet and then make like a, um, sort of fold it the other way. Um, the, the, like the cellophane um, um, sort of um, packet that you get inside. And then just, just, just tap them out along. If you do need to touch them, Try not to do it with your hands. If you can flick them along with a little stick or something, do that. Or, um, as I say, rub some dirt in your hands first and then move them that way. Um, however, having, having said all of this, you will still have problems, potentially, with areas where you've got a couple of foot where you've got no seedlings come through at all. And that's where the, um, the next bit um, will help you. What I've done over the past few years is I've actually grown parsnips in the greenhouse as well. So when I've had a problem where I've had a space in the row or, or, or whatever where I've got a an empty patch, what I do is then transplant parsnips into where I need them. Now this isn't easy. You can't grow parsnips in a pot because if you grow them in a pot, when you take them out of the pot, you damage the tapping root and the parsnip will be no good. You can't transplant parsnips like that. So I've, over the last few years, I've developed a, a method of doing this, which is what I want to show you now, which is what all this is about. Now, last night I put together this, uh, which is basically a um, parsnip propagator, and all it is is a, a couple of pe uh, pieces of plastic, which is the stuff that you use on the, the fascia plates on a house where, the, where your guttering goes around the, the edge of the roof. Um, it's a couple of pieces of wood off a um, pallet, a couple of strips of wood along the bottom just as a spacer which is again off a pallet and then I've got some across the bottom I've just got a bit of um, a bit of um, tongue and groove board which I had spare in the um, in the shed now the way that this works is if, if you can see in in here I've got a series of holes I've got 18 holes which I've drilled out I'll show you how to do this in a moment um, and in in each of these holes there will be these things here, which are basically um, the sides out of a Coca-Cola bottle or a, um, a pop bottle. Now the plastic bottles, you know, the ones that are sort of two litre, two litre bottles, all you need to do is cut out the sides, cut the top and the bottom off and cut out the sides and you need to have them around six inches deep, at least six inches deep, because that tapping root is going to go down and obviously, you know, when the plant's kind of that big, its tapping root is going to be about six inches long, so you need it most certainly that long. Now, so basically what you do is in each of these holes there will be these um, coiled up um, coke bottles and as you can see it's held, it's held at the top here in, a, in, the, in the, uh, the circular hole, it's also held here in the circular hole and then the wood at the bottom is purely there to stop this from falling through so when I lift it up they don't all fall out. Now all you need to do then is fill these fill these up with compost. Um, um, John Innings number one is a, is a, is a good um, compost to use but what I would do which I'll explain in a moment is I'd mix that with something more, um, like um, Miracle Grow or something like that something that's got a bit more sort of PT um, ness to it. Mix that up about 50-50 and then fill each of these cells up um, and then fill it up to the top so you've got about an inch left at the top and then in the top of each one sow um, about um, three parsnip seeds and then as soon as they start to grow obviously pick the strongest one pick any out that uh, have also germinated I would if you if you germinated them inside the greenhouse I don't think you really need to bother about putting three different types in because I think whatever you put in the greenhouse will germinate I've never really had a problem that way um, and then as soon as they've grown obviously put them in at the same time as the ones that are um, growing outside and then you'll be able to see the ones outside if you've got a space. Parsnip seeds tend to take about, uh, outside they'll take three to four weeks to germinate so you won't see anything for a few weeks 
um, but obviously when they start to germinate you'll see where the spaces are. What you could potentially do is sow them outside um, and then leave it a week or two and then sow some in here. Um, but um, even if you sow them at the same time you'll still have enough time to, um, to put them out. Then as soon as you've got the spaces all you need to do then is, and this is where the trick is, this is, this is where this is different to a pot. Because you've got John Indian's number one, which is like a sandy, um, soily based um, compost with a reasonable amount of sand in it, and it's ideal for seeds because it's got um, it, the, the the nutrition isn't particularly high. But you've also got the peaty um, um, sort of compost, and I know there's no peat in it, but you know what I mean. It's it's it's, it's more, um, you know, there's more stuff in there that's going to bind it together. What you can do then is obviously your seedlings will grow in here. Then as soon as you've got a space, all you need to do is pull out the the pipe like that, and obviously your your parsnip um, seedling will be in there. And then if you put it on your hand and then let it go, because the because the plastic from a Coca Cola bottle is will tend to spring open. What you'll be left with then is like a plug with the parsnip plant inside it. Now because you can sort of unravel the pipe, what you end up doing is not disturbing this this very delicate um, tapping root which is almost like a hair when it's when, you know when it's a small plant so all you need to do then is with it with a trowel dig a hole roughly the same size as that and then drop the whole thing into the hole put the soil back um, loosely around it and then just by putting your fingers in the top of the pipe and opening it up you'll then find that you'll be able to pull the pipe off the seedling which is in the ground and you've not disturbed the roots, um, the, this, this, this tapping root of the parsnip plant and then you can just put the soil back in there loosely and um, perhaps give it a bit of a water to just to water it in. But what you'll find by doing that is because you haven't disturbed the root, the parsnip will grow perfectly normally. You can't do this, to my knowledge, you can't do this with anything that you can buy out of a shop. You'll need to, to sort of make this. Now, if you're not particularly practical, and um, you, or you haven't got the tools or whatever. Don't worry. You don't need to buy. Uh, sorry, you don't need to make anything like this. I've made this um, just to make it easy for myself. Just to put 18 in there, and then I can just leave that in the greenhouse. You know, you know, give it a bit of a water, and um, you know, they'll they'll sort of happily grow on. Whilst I've been experimenting over the past sort of five or six years, all I've had is that. So all I've done is I've got Coca-Cola bottles or um, pop, you know, just normal pop bottles. Cut out the sides, and you need something about six inches long, yeah. And then obviously cut up the side of the bottle as well. So then you end up with like a like a sheet of plastic. But when you let it go, it'll go into a um, a pipe shape. And then either put an elastic band around that, or just put a little bit of tape around that. And then all you need to do is get a number of them together, and then put them in a, a box so you don't need you know you don't need to build one of these if you you, you know um, to uh, to do this I've done this for uh, convenience sake to be honest with you and then put put them all together obviously fill them up with your soil and put your seeds in and then obviously all you need to do is take that out then and then do exactly what I've just said put it in the ground and then put your fingers in there do that so it springs out take it out you're going to get exactly the same result so don't worry about um, making one of these but it makes it a lot easier because all I, all I need to do is just coil coil these up like that, and then all I need to do is just drop it in, drop it in the top one, drop it through the bottom one, and that's it. So all I need to do then is put some dirt in there. This needs to be the critical the critical part of this is just to give you a few dimensions. This is two inches across, so it's about um, five centimeters in metric. The holes. You can go slightly smaller and obviously you can go bigger, but if you go bigger you're going to get less of them in there. Um, the critical part is it's about six inches deep. Don't make it any shorter than that. You can go longer obviously, but um, don't make it any shorter than that. And I've made them at the same height as this for convenience so that I can put the compost in there and get it all in there. And then for watering I can just you know sort of water it. Again, you can make this out of many uh, materials. You can make it out of wood, plastic, metal, wherever you like, wherever you've got handy, uh, you can make it out of. You can even make it out of that sort of cardboardy stuff that's, um, 
it's it, it it's it's not it's like a plasticky cardboard and you can just cut these out if you don't have hole cutters as I'll explain in the next section you can just use a jigsaw or whatever um, or, or or as I say if you're not practically um, you know sort of practically minded all you need is actually that that's that's the trick part that's the bit that's going to actually um, you know sort of grow your parsnips so as long as you put them in a box and, and they stay upright they don't fall over that will more than do so that's the um, that's the parsnip propagator that I built last night it took about um, in all honesty it took about an hour to build that um, it didn't take long at all um, and all I used was a, a hole cutter which I'll show you in the next bit um, the, this is just off a of pallet it's all recycled material really apart from this which I had a bit of scrap in the uh, um, in the um, garage and if you can see through there there's there's holes as you can see here there's uh, there's like a there's like a hole in the uh, the bottom a series of holes so basically so when I water it it will drain through so as the water goes in here the water can go down and then like a normal pot it's got a hole at the bottom so it can drain out um, and then you know I can put the seeds in there all the water will drain out and then as soon as they've grown where I've got the missing spots you can put it in there you can grow all of your parsnips like this and then transplant them all outside if you have particular problems but what I will be doing and I'll show you later in the year using this um, I'm going to plant them in the in the um, in the in the ground and I'm going to use this which is why there's only 18 of them um, just to you, you know sort of bob them in where there's um, missing you know missing spaces so I can fill the row up so the next section of film what I'll do is I'll show you how I made this last night as I say it only took an hour to make it you could make a number of these you could make them bigger or smaller um, you know depends on what materials you've got and what tools you've got um, you don't perhaps need to go to the extent of this I, I tend to over engineer things because I enjoy making stuff but um, as I say this the, it's, it's all scrap recycled material um, uh, which I've um, used and all, and all it is it's just all screwed together um, make sure you've got a handle in the side of it so you can actually lift it up and you, you know you know it's easy to use um, and that's basically the parsley propagator so in the next section of film I'll show you how I made that time so Talking aside, the first thing I'm going to do is just to, where, where you see this is 32 inches long, it's 9 inches wide. So what I'm going to do is cut cut it in half, two lots of 16, and um, and then I'll I'll put these two things together so I can then start to um, drill the holes through with the uh, the cutter. So what I've done now is at the at this edge and at this edge there's going to be um, a a piece of wood sort of doing this if you like so that will be the that will be the sides this will be screwed down into that piece of wood both sides and so what I've done is I've just come in the same width as the wood both sides and then what I've done then is drawn a um, 30 mil or three centimeter grid onto the um, onto the board, I don't know if you can see that, and I've spaced it in slightly on each side to make sure that it's um, um, you know, equally spaced in the middle. So basically what I'm going to do now is, as you can see the circles on, so I'm trying to get out of my shadow, as you can see what I've done with the circles now, I'm going to cut three holes, one there, one there, one there, equally spaced, so I've got about just short of a centimetre between them, and then the next one is going to go, not on the next row of six centimetres apart, and then I'm going to grow the um, drill the next ones through. Um, so the so as you can see, that one will be there, and then you know there's plenty of plastic between to keep the strength. And so what I'm going to end up with is 18 holes um, across that um, piece of plastic. Now obviously the other piece of plastic is going to have exactly the same holes cut through it. So what I'm going to first do is put the two pieces of plastic together like that, and then what I'm going to do is drill the holes through the side through there and through there, um, three, one at each corner and then one in, uh, one in the middle. And then I'm going to bolt these two together, um, just temporarily with a, um, just just probably three bolts will do to one with two at one end and one at the other one. Um, and then as I drill through this piece, I'll also drill through the piece below it, so then I end up with two identical pieces of plastic.
So then on to cutting the holes, basically what you need is one of these things which is called an arbor and that um, basically just screws into your circular saw um, like that and then it locks in those pins there lock into the holes and then basically you, you cut a pilot hole with that and then that obviously cuts around the um, uh, around the hole so I'll just show you that now. So I'll quickly just drop some screws through three of the holes obviously fixing it three in places will hold them so the two boards are now two pieces of plastic are now um, held together and won't move so I can now drill out the uh, the hole shapes. Okay, so that's all the holes cut out of the um, the, the plastic. So as you can see now, the uh, the shape that I was intending to use. And what I'm going to do with exactly the same cutter, I've just cut two pieces of wood, which are the same width. And these, th this is important. This this um, uh, dimension here, that's about um, about five and a half, four and a half, five five inches, something like that. So yeah, it's about four and a half inches. So um, that's that that's reasonably important that um, that, uh, that distance there. So um, the bit of wood that you put in the side, this is the bit of this is the wood that's going to go sort of in there and in there to separate these two pieces of plastic. Um, that needs to be going on for six inches long. So that's really the only important um, dimension. These holes here um, can be slightly smaller or sm uh, slightly smaller. Uh, sorry, uh, slightly larger. Um, and one quick footnote. When you're cutting plastic, like I told you with the uh, when we were cutting the paint for the um, grapevine coming through the greenhouse, always go slowly. You need a nice coarse um, cutting blade and go slowly. Don't um, go too quickly because basically the plastic will melt. Okay, so now I've taken the two side pieces of wood. All I've done is sanded them down so they're nice and smooth. Um, obviously, you won't see the top and the bottom, but I've sanded the sides um, and the back and the front. And with the same cutter, I've just cut two holes um, about about um, two inches apart, so that ends up being about uh, four inches apart. And these are going to provide handles to lift it when it's all put together. So now what I need to do is to take the screws out of the uh, the top bit, and I'm going to countersink just one of them, which will be the top one. Okay, so we're almost there. All I've actually done, as I said, I'll countersink these holes. So if you can see, I've put um, a uh, an inch and a half screw through each of those so that's nice and fixed on the top um, we've got the the side pieces which I showed you making I've just cut those out so basically when it's got the the, uh, the parsnips in it you can just lift put your hand in there and lift it up on both sides um, and then corresponding underneath obviously is the second uh, piece of plastic and then as you can see what I've done here is I've Fitted a piece of piece of wood, which is around um, about an inch or so, sort of twenty mil, just just slightly short of a mil, uh, an inch. Um, and I've put some um, sort of three three inch screws, which will obviously go from there all the way through the plastic, and then into this piece of wood here. So they go all the way through into there. So basically, what's left to do now is the parsnips are going to go. Or the, or the tubes are going to go in the top here, through, and then through the second hole here. But obviously, if I pick it up, at the moment they're going to fall out of the bottom. So all I'm going to do now is very simply, I've just cut some uh, tongue and groove. It's only thin, a bit of rough uh, tongue and groove. And that's going to go along the bottom. Obviously, I'm going to slot them into it. Just other. a quick trick. Um, what I've decided to do is to drill a small hole anyway, and I can always make it bigger or smaller. Um, after I've been experimenting with it. So what I'm going to do, whilst I've got it apart, as in the top bit isn't attached to the bottom bit, um, I'm going to use the cutter that I've used just to put that in each hole. And then, if I to get out the light, what I'm going to do is just draw around the centre part with a pencil in there. And then I can tell exactly where the centre of each of the holes is before I screw it all back together. So what I'll do is I'll just mark through, put that in each hole and draw around the inside. And then I'll just drill um, probably about a six mil hole in in the middle of each one um, before I screw it on the bottom and then cut the excess off. Okay, so there you have it. That's the uh, the whole thing complete. So um, that's basically how you make a um, 
parsnip propagator. So basically all I've done is I've um, screwed screwed in the uh, the base along the back there and along here and I've just gone round quickly sanded this and um, I've put a bevel on the edge there just to make it a bit, a bit nicer um, and uh, just, just, just gone all around the edges and just take the corner off so it's uh, beveled. So there you go, so it's easy easy to use, you can pick it up from the sides there as soon as you've got your plasmus in and um, later in the season you'll see me um, using this to uh, grow some parsnips. So I hope this episode of Jim's Allotment Garden has been of some use to you. Please do put your comments um, down below. Please do um, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed so far. I really do appreciate your support. And um, I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Allotment Garden.